Hey everyone, and welcome to Wit Code. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building the Google homepage. And so you may think this is um, the actual Google homepage when this is actually one that I've created. And not only have I um, created it to look like it, it is also responsive. And what I mean by that is when we change the size of the browser, everything still looks in place. So say I move it here, and let's keep closing this. You can see the footer down here has stacked on top of itself, and you, so you can move it like this. Another thing is it's... Um, works with the height as well. So if we move it up here, when it gets too close to the actual section, you can see it starts fading away. And so we're not only going to be building the Google home page, but we're also going to be building it and making it responsive to how the user changes the screen. And so to build this page, what I'm only going to be using is HTML, CSS, and specifically with CSS, I'm going to be using a Flexbox. And furthermore, all, all the code and everything I'm going to be doing will be um, available through my GitHub. So I'm going to post a link through that in the description. And so let's get into the code. And so something you can also notice, I'm going to be using a few images. So I'm going to use, for example, like this Google Apps image, um, the microphone image to correspond to, say, like right here, this microphone and um, this um, image up here. But besides that, like the Google icon, for example, we're going to be coding ourselves. And so let's get started now. And so the first thing we should do is let's just create an HTML page. And let's call it google.html. And next, I'm going to use an exclamation mark like this coming down here and now let's do our first links so I'm gonna first one is gonna be not a style sheet but what this is gonna be the rel is gonna be icon and that will what that will do is that will set this up here so let's go back into here and specify where it is we do dot dash for the current location picks and then I believe I called it google icon png and then the next thing we're gonna do is let's create another link this is gonna be a style sheet because this is where we're gonna link to our CSS file to this HTML file. And I'm just going to call this one google.css. Save this. And then let's actually create google.css like this. So then these have linked up. And now to run it, I'm going to be using an extension called Live Server. So I'll post in the description how to download this. But what I will do is right click, open with Live Server. And you can see it's opened up. And so far, all we have is right here, this Google symbol here. And that is all we have at the moment. Let's also change the title here from document to Google. And then if we go back, now we've got Google. Great. Now before we start, let's get rid of some of the defaults that the browser puts in for us. So I'm going to use Control shift j to open up the Google Dev Tools like this. I'm going to go over to Elements. If I click on this here and highlight the body and HTML, or better yet, if I go in here and I go to Computed, we can see that there are automatic margins for the body that are created. So let's get rid of those. And so what we're going to do is go in here. We're going to do body. And for margin, we're going to specify that to zero. And this will get rid of the, the margins. And next we want to do is we want to use a font family throughout this whole thing that Google uses. And what this is, is Arial. And then if not, we have the fallback to sans serif. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to specify the font size. And I'm going to specify that to 0 0.09 EM. And what this basically means, EM, is relative to the actual font size, make it 0.9 times the actual size. Now let's start to create our navigation bar. So if you go in here, you can see we have this navigation bar up here. So let's start making this over here. And so to do that, let's go in here. And within our body tags, we're going to create a header. Because we're going to use it as a header because this is the top of our page. So type in header like this and within that we're going to have a nav because we are navigating through links and then within this I want to make two unordered lists so I'm going to do one here and one here and what each will correspond to so is one unordered list will correspond to this here and another will correspond to here so now let's go into our code and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class in here and I'm going to call it header nav and it's going to be the same class as this unordered list here because they're going to have the basically very similar styling so let's do that and now within here, let's create our anchor tags. So we have a href, let's just do pound, which means it'll take you nowhere. And then the first one, I believe, is about. And then let's do another one. Once again, let's use a pound so it takes the user nowhere when they click on it. And this is store. So this corresponds to these here. And then we need Gmail, images, and those two images. So let's go back into this unordered list. And let's do another anchor tag. Pound again. This one is Gmail. Let's do another anchor tag, this with the pound. And then this one is images. And now let's actually use our image um, tag here. And what we're going to do is we need our source will be in pics. And this one is the Google Apps. 
and for the alt let's just call it Google Apps and then we have one more image the source once again will be dot dash pics like this and then from there this one will be the profile pic because this is the profile pic that we are using and then for the alternate let's just call this profile pic so let's save let's save the CSS as well and let's go in there and see what it looks like so far so and there we are so let's unclick this and you can see we have everything set up so now we just need to do some editing and also before I keep going I think my head will probably be in the way here from the way I'm casting this so let's redock our dev tools in a different spot so if we click on these three dots here you can move over and select where you want it to go let's put it on the left because I believe I will be right here in this corner so then my head won't be blocking things and now let's go back into the code so if we go back to here something I also want to do is I want to add a class to both of these and so let's just call that header IMG and let's do the same thing in here this will come in useful later and now let's start styling our anchor tags so I'm going to use I'm going to go back into our uh, CSS file and I'm going to do a which means any anchor tag what we want to do is let's set their margin to be five picks all around so top bottom left right all of that and the next we want to do is let's get rid of their text decoration which basically means the underline so we're going to have that to none and then the final thing we want to do is let's make them black because I believe they're blue and then what we also want to make it is so when we hover over an a an anchor tag what we want to happen is we want them we actually want an underline that's the time we want it and so we're going to do text decoration to underline and then finally let's actually do something with our nav bar and what we want to do here is this is when we're going to start using flexbox so we're going to set the display to flex and so what flex does is it'll define a flex container and what, it, what that'll do is it'll expand items to fill the available free space or shrink to prevent overflow. And it's also very, just makes it a lot easier to work with columns, rows, and things such as that. And the next thing we're gonna do is justify content to space between. And so what space between basically means is you can organize your child elements in the X direction. So if we save this now, and we go to our Google file, you can see now that we have space between because this unordered list is on the left and this unordered list is in the right and then we have the space between which is where this comes from right here and so we have the space between but what we don't have is these aren't aligned like you can see these look pretty aligned but these don't these are off center they should all be centered with each other so what we're going to do for that is we're going to create another flex box so we're going to create a nested one but this one is going to be in our dot header nav class so you can remember back in html we defined the class or both of these as header dot nav I mean, what we, the reason we did that is because we want to make these flex boxes too. And so when you make something a flex box, the items within it, so for example, the UL, or both all the tags in here, the images and the tags, those all become flex items. And then we can use things such as align items, center, to work with them. And what this will do is it'll, it'll center them in the Y direction. So now if we go back here, you can see everything is centered. But what we should also do is we should change the padding and the margin. So if we come over to the dev tools again and we click this arrow up here, hover over it, you can see we have some, what is it, padding of 40 pixels and we have a margin of 14.4 on the top and the bottom and over here, what do we have for this one? Looks like the same thing. So what we should do is we should go in here and for both of these, let's decrease the margin. So let's do padding left to be 20 pixels and let's change the margin right. Let's change that to be 10 pixels. And now if we refresh this, let's go back, this looks, this looks a lot better. It still needs more work, so what we should do now is let's create another CSS tag. And for this, let's do UL and A. And this means any direct A element within UL, so in here, it'll be these, because these are directly within the UL tag. Any A element directly within there, and also any image that is directly in there. So let's use IMG. So this will correspond to these images here because they're directly within UL. What we do want to do with those is let's make the padding for the top and bottom to be zero. And for the right and left, let's set that to be eight pixels. Let's see what it looks like now. So this looks a lot better. And real quick, let's actually move this to split screen. So let's put this here and let's put this here. And then I'm going to shrink this here so we can work with it. And now we can see these uploads and more in real time. So now something we had in Google also over here is when we hover over these, we get this little box shadow and border radius thing. 
So let's go over here, and what we should do is we did dot, if you can remember, we did dot heading, we added a class, or header IMG. So then here we have these header IMG. What we want to do is when we hover over them, we want to add a box shadow. So what a box shadow is, is basically how it sounds. It's a shadow, and the first argument says the, the horizontal offset, we want that to be zero. Next is vertical, we also want that to be zero. And the next is the blur. So how much we want it to blur? We want it to blur by 10 pixels. And then finally, I believe, is the spread. So how big it is, basically. Let's set that to zero. And then let's do the color, which is the final argument, to be Gainsborough. So now, if we hover over these, turn off this again, you can see we get this nice shadow. But also, we want the corners to be rounded. So you can see they're rounded here. And the way you do that is with the border radius property. So let's do border radius, and let's set that to just some big number. If you set it to a big number, they'll be curved, and there we go. And then the final thing we want to do is let's change it so instead of a pointer, we have a, um, or instead of this default mouse, let's change it to a pointer. And so we're going to do that by cursor, pointer. So now you can see we have this nice hand. So we are now done with the top. So you can see if we go back over here, these are pr basically the same. So now what we want to work on is we're done with our header. Let's create a section down here and let's use the section tag because this will be the main body. So we're going to call it section and then let's create an H1 which will say Google and then below that let's make a div. So let's do div, not a dir. Let's do a div like this and let's give it a class to be my input container. And what this will be, is this will be the container that will house this image, this input container, and this, this other image. So let's do this. And then within, so what we want within there, is first we want our image. Let's do image, and the source, it's within our pics folder again. And this one will be the mag glass. I named it mag glass, it's a magnifying glass. And then let's do the alt, let's do mag glass. And then what we had in between that is an input. So this is where the user can of course type their text in. So let's do input to be text. And then we have another image, and this one is in dot dash pics, except this one is a microphone. And I believe I called it mic2. Let's go to mic2, and then let's give this an alt of mic. Save it. Let's see what it looks like so far. Cool, so we have Google, and then we have these three along each other. And now something we also have are these two buttons here. So below this, let's create another div, and let's give it a class of this one will be my button container. And let's go in here and let's create two buttons. So the first one I believe says just, oh, don't know what happened there. The first one I believe says Google search. Yeah, Google search. And then let's create another button. And this one says I'm feeling lucky. So let's save that. And cool. So, you know, it looks ugly, but that's how we get to this. So then let's start with our styling. So let's go back into our CSS file. And now let's start aligning everything. So you can see this is all here. Let's put it in the center. And so what we're going to do to do that is we're going to use section. So this will reference, of course, everything within here. Let's make this display to be the usual flex. And then by default, the flex direction is row. So you can see here, everything is in one row. But we want these to be in a column. So let's do flex direction and set that to column. Now we save that, it'll be the same, but for example, if we removed it and saved, you can see everything is in a row. So we, that's what happens if you set display to flex. By default, the flex direction will be, will be row, so let's set it to column. And now we can work with it from there. And so what we wanted to do is we want to align our items to be in the center of the page. So let's use align items and center. Align items center when you're using the column will center things horizontally. If you're using align items center with row, it would do the opposite. So let's say we do flex direction to row. You can see it has no effect. With this, what we would use is justify content center. So now you can see it's centered. So that's something that's very confusing with Flexbox people get wrong. But just know that if you're using common, if you're using the flex direction to be column and you want it to be centered in the middle, then you use align items for center. So that's how you do that. And now let's add a margin, and I'm going to use view height for that. So let's do margin, and or actually let's just do margin on the top. And what we want to set that to is let's do five 
view height. So what this VH is the view uh, is five times or percent five percentage of the viewport. So this is the viewport here, basically the browser window. So five percent of that. Let's make five percent of this whole thing to be this space within here. And now something I want to do is most people when they're creating the Google page will use this as an image, but I want to actually show you how we can make it ourselves. And the way we're going to be doing that is do something called font face. And so this what we'll do is we'll create a font family called Product Sans, and how we are creating it is from this source here. So I will post this in the um, description, and it'll also be in my GitHub of course, but so what this will allow us to do is actually use the Google font. And so now let's set our H1, let's set the font family to be Product Sans, which is this right here. So now you can see it's changed to be the actual Google font. However, something we also want to do is we want to change the size. So let's do font size and let's use 5.5 EM. So this means 5.5 times what it would be by normal. So this is 5.5 times bigger than what it was here. And that's what EM means. And now let's work on getting our input here to look like this. And so of course, once again, we're going to be using Flexbox. So let's do, um, I believe we made a class in here called my input container. So let's do dot my input container and then you know the drill let's set the display not to inline but to flex and what we want to do is we want to have it like this space between and what this will do is it'll even all these three out so let's do justify content space between and so now you can see everything is evened out and the next thing we want to do is let's specify a width so let's do a width of say 600 pixels and so now you may think this should have expanded, but remember this is only the input. The actual div is what is housing these things. And to make that more clear, and something we want to do anyway, or first let's specify a height. And let's do 38 pixels. So now these everything within it has increased. But to show this, let's use border, one pixel, solid. Let's do Gainsborough. So now you can see this is the actual div. This, however, is just the input container. And so now you might be wondering, how do we actually get this to fan out here? And luckily with Flexbox, something that comes with is the flex grow method. So now let's do dot my input container. And what we want to do actually is just specify a direct input child. So within our my input container class, we have one child that's directly within called input. So what we want to do with that is we want to set the property flex grow and we want to set that to be any number bigger than zero and so now you can see it is the biggest within this flex container so we could set it to 100 for example it would stay the same and the reason is because the flex grow by default is zero so both these have zero and this just basically means this will be bigger than the other two and now of course what we also want to do is we don't want to have a border so let's set the border to none you can see that has disappeared and then what we also I believe if you click on it you get an outline so when it's not clicked when you click, that is when the outline shows up. So then something we also want to do is set the outline to none. Now if we click on it, you can see it's disappeared. And then finally, something we have is when we hover over, you can see we get another box shadow. So let's do the same thing here. Let's actually put this up here, dot my input container. And what we want to do is when we hover over it, we hover over it, we want to add a box shadow. And what we're going to do is it'll be zero horizontal, and that means basically if it's shifted this way or this way, zero vertically, so this way or this way. And then what we want to add is a 10 pixel blur. And the size, we just want it to be zero. And now we don't have the color by default will be black. And let's change that again to good old Gainsborough. So hold over this, and that looks good. And then one thing we needed to specify up here too is we need to round these edges. So let's do border radius. And let's just set it to some bigger number. Let's just do 20 pixels. And that looks pretty good. So you can see how it looks similar to this here. And something I neglected within here, of course, is that our Google right here is just in black. What we want to do is we want to make it look like the actual Google. So actually these colors. So let's go into where that, that, where that is happening. And you can see we have right here Google. And so what we can do is we can add a span element surrounding each one of the letters. So if we do span, add a G here and then we create another span and there'll be O and do the same thing with the rest. And now you can see that we have Google still, but the reason we want to do these spans like this is so that we can style each of them individually. 
And so the style we want to do is color because we want to change the color to be the actual Google colors. And so I have to look up online to find these and let me do that real quick. So what I've done in here is I've surrounded each of with a span and then specified the color. I will post these colors, they'll be in my GitHub of course, but I will also post them in the description. But you can see each one of these is a span, it wraps a letter and it specifies the color. So we have blue here for G, red here for O, orangish yellow for another O, and so on. And now let's start to style our buttons. And also something we want to do is we want to add the cursor to change when we hover over these images. So the way to do that, let's go back to our style, go to the bottom, let's just do for any image tag that we go over, every time you hover over it, let's change the cursor to a pointer. And now so we go over that, it'll hover, and because these are images up here, it should do that as well. Awesome, so we get the same thing. And now let's work on our buttons. So the first thing I want to do is I believe we made a button container and we made it a class and we called it my button container. Let's just do, so we'll do my button container. And we, what we want to do is we want to add a, first let's add a padding top to be 53 pixels. So this should move them down. So we have them down here. And now let's actually style our buttons. So let's do, we only have these two buttons in the whole HTML. So for any button tag, what we want to do is we want to set the background color to be, the color is, the color is this right here. And then the next we want to do is let's set our border radius. So we have curved edges again, and let's just set this to five pixels. That looks better. And then the next thing we want to do is we don't want to have a border, so let's get rid of the border by setting that to none. Save that. That is gone now. And then we want to set the height. Let's set it to, I believe, 36 pixels. See how that looks? That looks pretty good. So end that with a semicolon there. And then let's add a padding. We want to do zero for the top and bottom, but we want to add some to the left and right. So let's do zero, and then let's do 20 pixels for the left and right. And then finally, let's do a margin, and let's zero for the top and bottom, and four for the left and right. And cool, so this looks pretty good. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to add a hover. So when we hover over the button, what we want to happen is we want to do the usual, change the cursor to a pointer. And then from there, we want to add another box shadow. So you should be familiar with this by now. First is the horizontal offset, zero. The vertical offset, we want to be zero. The size of the blur, which we want to be 10 pixels. And then the color, let's do Gainsborough. And we can also, we skipped it, but just to be consistent, let's also specify how much we change the size, keep that at zero. So there, that looks pretty good. So now we've created our header on our main section. So let's work on our footer. So we go down here, let's use the footer element like this. And what we're going to do again is we're going to have a navigation because we have navigations down here and we're going to do basically the exact same thing we did above. So we're going to have two unordered lists and let's give them IDs. So let's call the first one. The ID will be footer left and then let's make another one. This one will be footer right and let's save it like this. And then we have of course the anchor tags in between So and the usual pounds so it doesn't take the user anywhere and let's fill these in. Cool, and so we have these down here, and you may notice that these are already set up. So above here, it was all messed up, and the reason it is already seems to look pretty good is because if you can remember near the top, we had navigation, and we already set those to flex and space in between. And then we've also already done this. So basically, we are already a step ahead. However, this could look better. So let's start working on that now. So the first thing we're gonna do is just use the footer tag, and let's set the background color to be F2, 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 it's a nice little gray color. So you can see we have it there. And then something we wanna to do to make it actually be at the bottom is let's use position fixed. And now this basically means it's stuck at where it is, but we want it to be stuck at the bottom. And the way to specify this is we're gonna do bottom zero. And so now this means there's zero spacing between the bottom of the page and this footer. So it'll be stuck to the bottom here. And then finally, it's currently at 100, or no it's not, you can see we have some spacing down here. So let's set the width to be 100% of the view width. So whatever the width or whatever the viewport is for the user, so whenever size their browser is, set it to match it. And now let's start styling our individual footer navs. So we had footer left, I believe, and then we had footer 
right. And so the reason we're going to be setting these is so when we do breakpoints, um, or when we set breakpoints to make our page dynamic, we can work with these. So let's set this to flex by now. And for the left, let's set this to justify content to be flex start, which means it would be at the beginning of the flex box as opposed to the end. And then let's do the same thing with this one. So we'll do display flex. But instead of flex start, we want this to be at the end. So it'll flex to the end of the box as opposed to the beginning. And then something we want to do is for the left bar, we want to set the padding left to be 20 pixels because I believe it's 40. So you can see it's moved in closer. That looks a bit nicer. And then the next thing we want to do is let's just align our items to be center. And then for this, let's set our margin right. Let's add a bit to our margin here. So it pushes that away that looks a bit nicer. And then let's also align our items to be center, just like this. So we have made our Google page now. So if I maximize this, it looks pretty legit. You know, we got everything. You know, you wouldn't think this is not the real Google site. You wouldn't think twice if you came to it. But something that is wrong with it is the responsiveness. So let's go in here and let's change, see what happens if we change the width. You can see we get a horizontal scroll bar something that you really never want web dev. You got, um, you know, things are piling on top of each other here. This is out of view, so you can't really see this anymore. And then the same thing is if we change the height, it's always really hard to lock on here. But if we change the height, then you can see this is fixed and it overrides everything. So now let's start working on responsiveness. And the way we're going to be using that is we're going to be using media queries in CSS. So we're going to do at media max width 630 pixels and what this is saying is if the width is more is less than 630 pixels so anything less than 630 pixels let's do this and it means if this won't be applied if the width is greater than 630 pixels and so the first thing we want to do is we want to use our footer nav and we want to change the flex direction to be column so instead of row we want this to be column and I actually don't believe we added this in here. So let's go to this nav right here. And let's give it the ID footer nav. And then the next thing we want to happen is we want to change our footer left and our footer right. So we want to change these. And what we specifically want to change is how we justify the content. So justify content, we want that to be center because then these will be columns and they'll be on top of each other. So let's do justify content, that one, to also be center. And now let's go in here and let's decrease the size. And you can see, there we go. So they've, what happens is when it goes less than 630 pixels, this footer navigation, it turns into column instead of row. And because it's center, these become center. So they're basically being stacked on top of each other. And then the next thing we want to do is let's change our input container. So this, you can see, goes out of view. Let's set, I believe it was dot my input container. I believe it was a class. Yeah, so we have my input container. And let's set the width to be 95 of the view width. So now, whenever it's less than, it'll dynamically change because it'll constantly be 95% of the view window. So we, that looks pretty good. Let's keep moving. Let's just double check. Yep, and you can see it's not breaking out of sight anymore. And now, next, let's fix our height. So we've got our media for what we want to change if the direction changes in that direction. But now let's do a media for max height. And what we want this to be, let's do 522 pixels. And whenever the height is, so this will say, do this stuff if the height is less than 522 pixels. If not, don't apply any of these. And so what we first want to do is for the body, let's set the overflow of the X, which means in the horizontal direction, to hidden. So by default, it would show that horizontal scroll bar. But now what we're going to do is we're just going to hide it. We're not going to show it. And then something we also want to do is let's change our section. So if you remember, section is where we house all this stuff in here. Let's add a margin bottom of 20 pixels. And this will come in handy when we're trying to move this from a fixed position to a relative. And you will see how this works in a second. But then let's change our footer to position relative. 
So if we change the position to relative, that means it'll be where it should be in the document flow, which would be right below here. And then also what we want to do when it gets to 522, we want to add a margin. So let me show you what this would look like. So now, man, I'm telling you, like always click on this. I don't know if there's an easier way to do it, but if you move it up like this, let's see where we get to that break point. So when we're at 522, you can see, then it stops. So right here is where the position is changing to relative. So we move it here, changes to relative, and this 20 pixels right here is what's gonna be in here. This makes it look better so it doesn't jump around. So let's say we have this at like, I don't know, 40. If we then grab this and move it up here, see how it jumps back? If we use 20, it's kind of like a way of disguising that. So you can see it just basically looks like it stops and starts moving. And now the only thing we need to fix now is the max height and width. So what if we change it to this and then we also change the height in here. You can see these group up and then they're over there. So let's, um, I know a shortcut here. So to work with that, we wanna work with the max height and the max width. So let's make another media query at media. And this one will be max height will be, let's do 570 pixels, and, so we're also, we can specify more than one, max width to be, once again, I believe it was that, 630 pixels. So now, what this will say is do this only if the max height, so the height is less than 570 and the width is less than 630. And what we wanna do with this is once again, for the body, you wanna overflow X, to hidden so we can get rid of that nasty scroll bar and then section once again very similar let's do margin bottom but this time for that we're going to do 13 pixels for the same reasons that i showed you above and then the last thing is footer again position relative so basically we we're doing the exact same thing we we're just changing how the margin bottom would look so let's move this up still looks good there and then let's move it across cool so we can see you might be wondering where this went that's down here so we are working now so if we move this and then if we want to see the rest we just get to scroll down if we've made overflow y hidden then of course this would disappear but we don't want that so now move this just keep moving it around and cool so this was how to make the Google homepage to be, um, to change its display and make it um, interactive. So I'm probably going to do another one of these in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.